this month's theme is pulled by vision. And it's asking us to move forward, forward in our lives. Rick, you gave the perfect segue to this earlier. To let go of our complacency of what is comfortable and familiar, the path of least resistance, and to allow ourselves to be pulled forward, both by our individual and our spiritual community's collective vision of a future more magnificent than anything in our past. This, of course, comes on the heels of a pandemic that already upended our comfortable and familiar, and which provided us, if we chose to accept it, the opportunity to really reflect on what matters most to us. For some of us, being part of this community made the cut. Some others seem to have discovered a different way to meet whatever needs their time at the center had met for them. Those of us who decided that our Center for Spiritual Living still matters to us are being invited today into some self-reflection. We are being asked to consider the question, is your commitment greater than your resistance? One definition of commitment is a willingness to give your time and energy to something you believe in. Here at our center, everyone is welcome. Welcome to share in our Sunday services, our social events, our classes and workshops. We exclude no one. We don't care what your religious background is, what color your skin is, who you love, or how you dress. And you don't have to make any commitments to participate in any of those things except for class where there is some cost and homework and an agreement to show up. But for those who choose to make a greater commitment to our community, the commitment of actually becoming an official member of the Salt Lake Center, do so, I believe, because they are being pulled forward by a vision of even greater belonging, of not only receiving but of giving of themselves to the collective greater good. And you are totally free to make that commitment or not. We do not pressure anybody to become a member. Now, in truth, we do hope that after some period of participating, you will want to commit yourself to being a member of our center, that you will have found a value in the principles and tools that we teach that help you to create the life you say you want. The only privileges that membership gives you is the ability to vote about certain financial decisions and to vote in the elections for our board of trustees, who we entrust with the business of our center, such things as our finances and our facility and the hiring of our staff. Membership is also required to serve on the ministry council which cares for the ministry of our center, what you see up here on Sunday morning, our classes and workshops, our social events, youth education, communications, and more. And of course, you have to be a member to become a practitioner, along with doing four years of classes and training. Like most privileges, the privilege of membership comes with some responsibilities and commitments that you were asked to make, both to yourself and to your spiritual community. Our membership has gotten much smaller during the pandemic, and personally, I would like to see it expand and grow. So today, I want to remind those of us who are members and those who may be considering it of what we say we commit ourselves to in becoming a member of our center and encourage all of us to ask ourselves when it comes to my spiritual community, is my commitment greater than my resistance? Even if you have no interest in being a member, I hope you'll find some value in what I have to share because it's much more um, universally applicable than just here. The first thing that we ask of anyone who wants to become a member is that they attend a class that helps you to understand our philosophy, tells you some about the history of both science of mind and of our own center, 
Um, we tell you about the many different things we offer and the many ways that you can choose to serve here. We had about a dozen people signed up to take that class when the pandemic hit, and we're offering it again this fall. And there's a sign-up sheet in the lobby if you're interested. Um, and current and former members are welcome to take it again if you want a refresher. So after you complete that class, the attendees are invited to choose to become a member or to continue participating without making that commitment. Either choice is respected and accepted. There's no pressure to join. For those of you who are members or who are considering it, I thought I would remind us all of the agreement that we sign when we choose to join. I know that I don't always live up to this agreement in part because I honestly don't remember what I signed. And I realize we sign it and give it to the center. <laughs> so because of that, I have printed some copies of the agreement so that you can take it home with you to remind yourself of the commitment that you made or that you may want to consider making so that this center can continue to grow and live and continue to teach a philosophy for daily living and to offer an alternative spirituality to the Salt Lake Valley and to those we are able to reach through our online ministry. So the agreement begins by saying, as a member of the Center for Spiritual Living, I am in alignment with the basic teachings and practices of the science of mind. So the membership class does cover some of the basics, but the best way to really get grounded in them is to take the Foundations of Science of Mind class. It's a requirement for some areas of service in the center, and it's a prerequisite for all of the other certificated classes that we offer. It's also the first step to become a practitioner should there be that be a way that you see yourself serving. If you're interested in taking foundations for the first time or again, please let us know. Send us a note on, online or something and we'll work on getting that set up for the fall. So the agreement goes on to say, my commitment to be a member of this center means, and then it has a bullet point list of 11 items that we say we choose to do. And so with each of these, I again ask that you consider, is my commitment greater than my resistance? So the first commitment is, I choose to live a more authentic life and to make my spiritual evolution a priority. I read that and I thought, wow, we just start off with something really simple, right? Living an authentic life, what does that mean? Well, to be authentic means to be true to yourself, to be congruent through your thoughts, your words, and your actions with what you say you value and believe. Another definition said it means to not care what others think about you. I think that's a lot to ask, don't you? <laughs> Especially since it requires as a prerequisite that we actually decide who it is we want to be. To be true to myself, I have to know who myself is. Now personally, I wish I could say that all of my thoughts are always congruent with who I say I want to be, which includes being a loving, caring person. They're not. <laughs> I'm slightly better at my words and actions being that way. Slightly. <laughs> Though not always. Because another thing that's really important to me about who I want to be is to be honest. And for me, that includes not pretending that something is okay with me when it is not. Reverend Donald used to always say, tell the truth and tell it fast. And I'm unfortunately better at times at being fast with speaking my truth than with saying it kindly. So I've done it before. Again, I apologize to any of you that I've offended with my quick response about something that I don't agree with. I continue to be a work in progress. So I ask each of you to consider what is authentic for you. 
Who do you really want to be? And is your commitment or resistance to being that the more powerful? That first agreement also asks us to commit to making our spiritual evolution a priority. Evolution is the gradual development of something, especially from a simple to more complex form. Are we evolving spiritually beyond manifesting parking places? For those of you who don't know, that's one of the first things we teach on how to use the principles. Visualize the parking space where you want it, and there it is. Um, but are we moving beyond that into being able to recognize the divine perfection behind all? all appearances to the contrary. Again, I confess, I'm not fully there. It is something I am always working on to remind myself, this is divine, this is okay. The second agreement says, I choose to support the center's stated purpose, which we said this morning, we say every Sunday, we are an open, welcoming community, celebrating our divinity, loving our humanity, and nurturing our journeys of spiritual discovery. The purpose of that is for us to ask ourselves, are we doing that? Is my priority here on Sunday morning to see all my friends, or to, for some of us to do the tasks that are ours to do, or is it being welcoming to others, especially those who have just found us and are here checking us out? I invite us all to ask ourselves, do we go out of our way? When somebody stands up or raises our hands, how many of us make sure that we go and welcome that person? Um, I don't know the answer to that, but this is what you get to ask yourself. <laughs> Um, it also raises the question of how well we celebrate by truly recognizing that we are divine and how accepting we are, or are we judgmental of our own humanity, including where we think we fall short? And how well are we nurturing our own journey of spiritual discovery? Number three says, I choose to join my fellow members in creating a loving, accepting atmosphere. Now, if there's one thing I do ex experience here on Sunday morning is that this place has got a whole lot of love. I again just request that we all ask ourselves, are we extending that love to everyone or just to our own select group of friends? I read a review of our center one time and it said we, that, they were, that we're very clicky. That is the antithesis of an open and welcoming community. So I challenge each of us today, apparently there are no new folks here, or at least they weren't willing to let us know, but there's probably somebody here you don't know terribly well. Go talk to them for a minute, get to know them. The fourth agreement says, I choose to invite people consciously to consciously engage in the life of our center. How many of us are inviting new folks, folks to join us or encouraging those that are already here to get more consciously and actively involved? Are we inviting them to join us for a class or a workshop or to put in, hey, what's going on with you? Put in a prayer request. Or, hey, I've got this team. Would you like to serve on it? Or, we want to come to lunch with me. Number five says, I choose to extend myself with loving warmth to guests and people I do not know. I think I've said enough about that for today. But I was struck with how often it um, feels like that's implied in our membership agreement. And I wondered if it's because we know we have room to grow there. Sixth agreement says, I choose to include the center in my daily prayer life. That's another one that I didn't remember was in here. Um, I'm so thankful. Katie Hernandez is really good at reminding the practitioners about that. When it's her turn to send out the prayer request to the rest of the practitioners, she almost always adds a prayer for the center, asking us to do that. Thanks, Katie, for that great reminder. And hopefully everybody, whether you're a member or not, is adding the center to your daily prayers, assuming you have those. 
<laughs> Number seven says, I choose to financially support the center with regular financial giving. We've really done an amazing job of recovering from the initial fi financial crunch that happened right after the pandemic and continued for a bit until many of us realized that our income had not gone down and that we could continue to support this center the same way we had before um, because it means so much to us. And so with the potential of hiring a senior minister, I hope we can all ask ourselves if there's even more of a way we can step up in that way. I'm also hoping we'll attract the lots of more new people who will help. The eighth agreement says I choose to serve as a community builder by volunteering with joy. A few folks have done a lot to sustain us over the time since the pandemic struck. But now that we're fully open again, it's time for more of us to step up. To agree to serve monthly in the lobby as greeters or at the concierge table, to assist Jerry with refreshments, to help usher, showing people the way into the auditorium and helping with the offering. We will soon be creating a place on the website and in the newsletter with a list of ways that you might choose to serve for now. Um, right now, we have some immediate needs, which is some people to help with cleanup um, and serving and cleanup of the meals for next candidating weekend. There's a sign-up sheet in the lobby for that. And um, also our 50th anniversary celebration on August 28th. There's a sign-up sheet to help with that. And if you have a way to serve that we've never even thought about, please let us know about it. We are open to other things happening instead of what we've always done. Number nine says, I choose to practice authentic communication. If I experience personal upset with the center or with other congregants, I will seek guidance from spirit, then speak with and resolve any upset directly with the person or persons involved. I wish I could say that we all do this, but you would know that I'm lying. But instead of getting mad and going away, which some people have done, because you don't like what someone else did, or talking about that person to other people, trying to get them on your side and to agree that that other person is really horrible. Our job is to first pray about it. If that doesn't give us what we need, then do a session with a practitioner to help find our way back to the spiritual truth. And then go talk directly with the person about our upset if we're still upset after the prayer and the session. And if that feels too difficult, it's okay to ask a practitioner or someone else you trust to hold the spiritual truth for that meeting to help you have that conversation. We cannot be a community if we fragment ourselves over upsets that could be resolved with prayer and conversation and love. Number 10 says, I choose to set healthy and appropriate boundaries for my participation. This one means that we each recognize that we cannot do it all and that it does not serve the center for us to get burned out trying. There, that has been difficult during the pandemic when our pool of available volunteers was greatly diminished. But as members, we can each find a way that we can serve at least once a month, helping with the Sunday morning service or working on social events or service to the greater community. If you're ready to join or rejoin the ranks of those serving, please let someone from the ministry council, the board, or somebody already serving in the lobby know that you're ready. Send us a note online and we will get you trained and scheduled to help our center thrive. And the last agreement says, I choose to take responsibility for getting my needs, spiritual and otherwise, met. This means that we each acknowledge that we are living expressions of the one who has chosen to show up as us 
to uniquely express an aspect of itself that serves the world. Part of doing that is to recognize that it is our own spiritual work that is the number one way that our needs get met. If we are each doing our own work, our collective consciousness cannot help but attract those who can be served by the spiritual message we have to share. So, now that I've covered all of that, I hope that each of you will take a copy of the agreements after the service and put it where you can frequently consider for each of those things whether your commitment is greater than your resistance. If you're watching online, just shoot us a note to the center's contact form and tell us you want one and we'll get that emailed to you right away. And any of you who want it electronically, same thing. If you are not a member and you have no interest in being one, that's okay. You can ignore the parts that refer specifically to the center and instead focus on the more general spiritual agreements that might serve you well to make a part of your life everywhere. I would hope that at least for the majority of us, we might choose in all areas of our lives to live authentically with our spiritual evolution a priority. That wherever we go, that we would choose to be open and welcoming and nurturing of our spiritual journeys. That we would choose to create a loving, accepting atmosphere in our homes and our work and where we play to extend ourselves with loving warmth to all we encounter, to serve others with joy, to communicate authentically, to set appropriate boundaries for ourselves, and to take responsibility for getting our own needs met, which doesn't mean you meet them all yourself, but that you take responsibility to ask others to help you. The world, like our spiritual community, works when we all do our part and open our hearts to truly creating a world that works for everyone. For those of you who are members of the center or aspire to be, I encourage you to identify the agreements where your resistance is much greater than your commitment and continue to evaluate how does that resistance serve you? Perhaps it's revealing to you that you do not truly want what you thought you wanted or that you have some fear of failing or succeeding that is getting in your way. Is there separation that you feel because of someone in the community with whom you feel at odds? And if so, are you willing to ask for prayer or have a session with a practitioner and talk with that person to clear the air so that you can move forward with an open heart. I also encourage you to recognize which of the agreements you find most valuable for your spiritual development and for creating this spiritual community to help manifest a world that works for everyone. When you have identified that agreement or those agreements, it lays out for you the place to focus your attention in order to create the life you say you want. It might also help you recognize that, in fact, you want a different life that requires other commitments. If you have identified that this spiritual community is important to you, there is one commitment I ask of each of you today. Next weekend, we hope host Reverend John Auden and his wife Joan as we consider if he might be the right person to be our next senior minister. And he considers if we might be the best place for him to embody his vision of ministry. I ask that you each be here Saturday afternoon from 3 to 5 for an opportunity to talk with Reverend John and Joan in an unstructured kind of atmosphere to get a sense of who they are and share with them a bit about who you are. On Sunday, I am asking each of you to be here for the day, for the Sunday service where he will speak, for lunch at noon in his workshop from 1 to 3, and then to stay from 3 to 4 for a question and answer to wrap up the, session, the weekend. 
You'll each be given evaluation forms for his Sunday talk and another one for the workshop that we will ask you to complete while you're here and turn in before you leave. Then based on those evaluations and the ones the leadership groups complete, we will decide what the next step will be. I know that Sunday is a really long day and it's really important. I remind you that we have been without a senior minister since Reverend Marty left in July of 2016. That's five years. We had one interim minister and one consulting minister, but the majority of that time we've been on our own. And it is a tribute to who we are that we have survived. But the time has come to move forward. And this is really the place to ask yourself if your commitment is greater than your resistance. Do we truly want to be a center for spiritual living, teaching the principles of science of mind, or are we wanting to be something else? What is our commitment? And what resistance might keep us from being what we were created to be? A place where we teach the principles and tools of science of mind that allow people to fully express the creative energy with which we are each endowed and to live up to our full potential as individual expressions of the one heart and mind that created all that is and brought each of us into being so that it might more fully express all aspects of itself. The world and our center are not complete if our resistance is greater than our commitment to express God as we were created to do. Commitment is an act, not a word. It is not enough to say we are committed. We must act on that commitment by overcoming our own resistance and aligning ourselves with the power and presence that is within us longing for full expression. I really hope to see all of you next weekend. So now, as we move into prayer, I invite the practitioners to come forward for our wall of prayer. It's been a long time, so I'll remind you of how this works. I will pray the first two steps of our five-step affirmative prayer, and then I'll be silent as you're invited to come forward and share with a practitioner what you would have them know for you today. This is not for you to share your story of what's going on, but just to say things like, I want to know peace in my relationship with my friend, or I want relief from my pain. I want to manifest the perfect job for me, or have the courage to speak my truth with love. The practitioner will then do a quick prayer for you. Um, I invite you, if, there, if all of the practitioners are um, busy, that you um, just stand at the front of the aisle and wait for the first one available and then come forward um, to them. All of the practitioners are fully vaccinated. We do ask that if you are not, or if you're not comfortable with being that close because you kind of have to whisper in their ear, um, please wear a mask. And once everyone has been prayed for, I will close with the final two steps of prayer, thanksgiving and release. So let's pray together. I am so aware of the beauty that enfolds us here. The glorious mountains the beautiful sky, the trees and so many flowers blooming, all the birds, the quail and the duck and all the flying creatures that come to the tree outside my window and remind me that there is a power and presence that by speaking its word brought everything into being. Every single thing and every single person 
expressions of that one divine mind and heart. And I am one with that. I am an aspect of that divine created to be Linda and the unique things that I bring to the world. And as I know this for me, I know that for each person here, that everyone here and everywhere else on the world was created with the qualities of the divine in a unique way. And the world is not complete if we're not all expressing it. And so I know right now that as you come forward, whatever is on your heart, those prayers will be answered. So right here and right now, in this holy moment, for every prayer that was spoken out loud and for all the prayers of your hearts that you didn't bring forward, I know that they are spoken and therefore they are done because the law always does the work. And so in deep, deep gratitude for this sacred time together and for the truth of love and law, I just say thank you and let it be as together we say, and so it is. <laughs>